See, he's very, like... See, he's very, like, indecisive, you know? Right, hey guys, welcome to day 18, I think it is. Uh, today, we I have a Gregory video for you guys. Leave a like if it's over 20 minutes. I'm gonna try to get to over 20 minutes this time, okay? And uh, so, as you guys know, you guys know the drill. It's, it's part four. I'm not gonna be showing the tweets on the screen, but for any media or images or videos that pop up on the screen, I'm gonna have it on the screen for you to see. I'm gonna be sure that you see what you need to see. I hope you enjoy, it's kind of like a podcasty kind of vibe. And I finally caught it, guys, I finally caught it. It is 100% chance of rain right now. It is storming outside right now. You might hear some thunder. And uh, yeah, I just hope it makes it overall a little bit more creepy for you. And uh, just snuggle up and just dress in black or some shit. Get your BTB hoodie, DM me, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, basically, what happened last time actually was that Greg saw the lady in the in the forest. Oh, Harambe is trending on Twitter. He saw the lady in the forest, and he saw like weird artifacts on the log, and um, and he found a a wine cellar and a library and a little alcove in his house that he he didn't know anything about any of them. All right, anyway, let's get started. She was here. That woman was in my house. Sorry, I'm getting a ahead of myself. I can barely type. Sorry. I'll try to explain. All right, so I was in the woods out back yesterday when I started, when it started pouring. Oh, hey, it's just kind of like, you mean kind of like how it's doing right now? It happened really suddenly, and even though I wasn't far from the house, I got, sh I got soaked anyway. It rained most of the evening. I left my clothes by the fireplace to dry and ended up going to bed early. Or I guess it was today. Sorry. I'm not- I'm still not really awake yet. Anyway, I had this awful dream tonight. Sorry, I'm... Sorry if I'm rambling a bit. I'm still trying to collect my thoughts. Sorry, my hands are shaking. Please stop with the sorries, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry, but you need to stop. In the dream, I was on the deck outside with a bunch of friends from back home. We were all sitting in a circle. My friend Eric was there, talking about how creepy the woods were. He, were, he was saying how the trees were just big black silhouettes, and anything could be out there watching you, and you'd never know it. He was sort of freaking me out, but I was trying not to show it. I'm all, I know what you're doing, it's not gonna work, you're not gonna scare me. And Eric sort of narrowed his eyes at me and says, I bet I can scare you. Something about the way he said it made me, made me uneasy. And I was like, all right, very funny, you can stop now. But Eric wasn't smiling anymore. He was just staring back at me. The whole mood seemed to shift at that point. Nobody in the circle was talking anymore, and it suddenly got really quiet. No sound except the wind and the lake below. Any trace of joking has disappeared from Eric's face. After a long minute, he slowly cocked his head to the side a bit. Fuck. After a long minute, he slowly cocked his head to the side a bit and said, Is there someone here with us right now who shouldn't be? Man, this is... This is... Fucked up, dude. All of a sudden, I was too scared to break Eric's gaze, afraid I'd see something I didn't want to. For a long time, we just stared at each other. Nobody said anything. Then very softly, Eric said, Is there somebody watching you sleep right now, Greg? That's... What? And this is while he's sleeping. That's when I bolted awake. It was in the middle of the night. I was alone in my room, but I had this weird feeling that someone had just been in there with me, in the room with me. I laid... I laid there in bed for a minute, too terrified to move, too scared to breathe, even. I know that feeling. And then I heard something downstairs. At least I thought I did. Shit. This scared me, dude. <sighs> Sorry, that was the weather thing. Telling me that there's weather. <laughs> and then I heard something downstairs. Like, it, it just scared me because I heard, it said I heard something downstairs and then like, I actually heard something like in the other room. It scared the shit out of me. Like, it made me feel uneasy just now. Like my stomach, I don't know. And then I heard something downstairs, or at least I thought I did. This house is always making sounds, so I couldn't be sure. I hesitated for a second, then crept out of the bed and went down the hall, trying to be as quiet as possible. From the second floor landing, I could see the living room and part of the kitchen. Everything seemed normal. 
I could hear the wind blowing pretty loudly outside, so I figured maybe I hadn't heard anything after all. I tried to calm myself down. I was wide awake at that point and too shaken to go back to bed. So I went downstairs to get back, to get a snack or some coffee or something. I walked into the kitchen and stopped dead in my tracks. There's a door in the kitchen that leads outside and it was wide open. Oh, hell no. And here's the picture. Wow. It is wide open. Is, is the lock broken? I can't tell. I can't tell. But look how, look how messy that is over there, like on the floor. Oh, man. I know I locked it. I lock all the doors every night. And even if I forget to lock it, I know I wouldn't have left the door wide open like this. The whole kitchen floor is wet with rain. Yeah, see? I, I'm calling a locksmith first thing in the morning to come change the locks. Shit, I want to leave, but I don't even know where to go. I'm alone out here. Should I find a motel? And I just realized my wet clothes are gone. She fucking stole my clothes. I'm not spending the night here. And then there's a tweet that he replied to. They said, if she is able to navigate in the house and she has no eyes, that means she's familiar with the house and the house layout. She's been in here before. She's been in there before and knows it well enough to walk around without bumping into anything and making a lot of noise. Get the fuck out. And then Greg replied, I didn't even think of this. I left, but I'm still freaking out a bit. I'm trying to find a hotel or something. This is really getting in his head. Like this is really getting to him. I don't know, what do you guys think? And then here's Christmas Eve. Here's just before Christmas Eve. I'm sorry I haven't said anything in a while. I've been staying in a motel about an hour outside of town when I left the house that night. I just kept driving until I felt like I was far enough away to feel safe. I called the locksmith, but they weren't able to come out right away, and there was no way I was going back to the house without new locks. So I've been waiting it out here until I can go back, basically doing nothing, jumping at every little sound and, I've, and feeling crazy. Yeah, you see, I, I think he's actually losing it, right? He's actually going crazy over this, which is kind of reasonable, but at the same time, I think maybe he's overreacting. But if all of this was happening to me, I would for sure be making YouTube videos about it and everything. Finally, a couple days ago, the locksmith called back and said he'd come out. So I checked out of the motel and got in my car to drive home. It was a pretty long drive back, and the closer I got to the woods, I felt the, the worst I felt. In my head, I knew going back was wrong, but I can't just leave for good. I don't know. I can't explain it. I can't leave. I don't expect anyone to understand. I don't even understand. Anyway, I drove past town and reached the woods where the roads get worse and harder to drive on. They get twisty as you drive up to the house and you have to be careful not to hit deer. I almost always see a dozen or so deer on my drive, but today there were none. You know, this is really weird and fucked and scary and sinister. Not a single deer in sight. In fact, the woods seemed a lot quieter than usual. I couldn't have been imagining it, but something, but something definitely seemed off. I was almost ready to turn around when something darted across the road. What darted across the road? It was so fast that I wasn't sure I saw it at all. I panicked and swerved off the road into the deep grove by the roadside. Oh, come on, bro. He, he, he wrecked, he crashed. By the time I realized what had happened, the thing was gone. I have no idea what it was. It was just a blur, but it wasn't a deer. It was red, blood, red like blood. Worse, my car was stuck. It's my mom's old car. This weak little two wheel drive and I couldn't manage to get out of the grove. I sat there for a long time trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> I knew it wasn't a good idea to walk in, to walk the rest of the way, but if I didn't, I'd miss the locksmith and I'd either have to spend the night in the house with old locks or go to the mo or go back to the motel which i couldn't afford i wasn't too far from the house so it made most sense to walk the rest of the way and call a tow truck from home i needed to meet the locksmith anyway so i got out of and i so i got out and started walking once i was outside i realized i'd been right about the woods seeming quieter than usual i couldn't even hear any birds it was dead silent my footsteps seemed so loud. Every twig cracked under my shoe sounded like a bone breaking. God damn, bro, shit. You see, I think he's so in in his head, like he's, his, his thoughts, 
His head is getting loud. You know, you know that song, my head gets loud, trying to turn it down some, but the bass bleeds, I can drown it out like boom, boom, boom. You know, that song, like, his head is getting loud right now, bro. This is what that song is about. Freaking, uh, what's his name? He made this song for him, the peanut butter waffles guy. I was periodically checking my phone's GPS to make sure I was heading it, heading the right way. I had just rechecked my route and was about to put my phone away when I saw something that made my heart sink. It was another one of those artifacts, like the ones that had that I had seen on my first day here. But, but this one had one of my gloves tied to it from the rainstorm last week. When I left my clothes by the fire to dry, there, there was a pair of gloves with them. And here's the picture. Wow. You see, like I said in the other episodes, now he feels like a target, I bet. I bet now he feels like a target. It's in a triangle even. Illuminati confirmed. Like, come on. I knew that woman had taken my clothes that night and this just confirmed it. I also knew I'd find the rest of my clothes before I even saw them. And sure enough, I found more of those artifacts not far from the first. I found my other glove, my socks, and a, band and a bandana. Everything from that night except for a sweatshirt I'd been wearing. Yeah, that, I think that lady has a, a kink for sweatshirts. Like, dude, this is weird. Like, this is really weird. Like, these are like, these aren't dream catchers, I don't think, are they? This is so weird. Imagine, imagine, what would you do if this happened to you? Like, see, that rhymed. All I wanted to do was get back to house, get the locks changed, and call a tow truck. I started jogging a bit, wanting nothing more than to get away from those stick things. But after a while, I started to think that I should have been home already. I slowed my pace and took my phone. Wouldn't calibrate this time. Couldn't seem to locate me in the GPS. Still, I could hear the lake to my left, which meant if I kept walking alongside it, I should get to my house eventually. So I kept moving and tried not to think about getting lost. I must have gotten turned around because I must have gotten turned around because I was walking for what seemed like ages. I found myself in a part of the woods that seemed unfamiliar. I had no idea where I was, and then suddenly I saw something off in the distance. Something bright, wh something bright white almost seemed to glow against the dark trees. What? It looks like eggs. Are these Easter eggs? I thought this place didn't have any eggs. It's weird. I couldn't figure out what it was from a distance, so I went closer, trying to be as quiet as I could. When I actually got close enough to see what it was, my mouth literally fell open. It was it was eggs, huge eggs, all in a cluster, like a nest. These are huge. These are huge, look at that tree. Jeez. Big ass eggs, bro. Who did this come out of? They were enormous. It's hard to explain their size, but you can sort of see them in relation to my boot here. Jeez. Why are they so freaking eggs on steroids, bro? Yeah, there's the image. I felt like I was dreaming. Before I even knew what, what, what I was doing, I touched one. I couldn't help myself. It was warm. I had the sudden urge to smash it and then see what was inside, but just as quickly decided against it. I felt sick like I was going to throw up if I didn't leave right away. I left the clearing and tried to listen for the lake, then headed in that direction. Oh my god, clock, be quiet. Nobody, nobody cares. But yeah, I'm sitting on the famous sofa, on the famous couch, so I'm not in my room because I was kind of too scared. I got to the lake shore and felt a little better. Since I was out of the trees, I had a better view of my surroundings, and I was able to pinpoint my house a ways down the shore. I never thought I'd be so happy to see it. Man, I think he missed the locksmith already, dude. The rest of the way back, I felt like I had vertigo. I couldn't make sense of everything that had just happened. I still can't. I reached the house and somehow felt a little better once I was inside. Define vertigo. Vertigo means a sensation of- Oh, okay. It's a sensation or a loss of balance, right? The locksmith arrived a bit later and changed out the locks. I watched him work in a daze. I also had him install deadbolts. I called a tow truck and they got my car out of the ditch, but now I'm alone again and I can't stop thinking about what I saw.
do these people like the locksmiths and the tow truck people like do they think this place is just as weird as he's thinking um well I just saw a bug <laughs> you hear the weather outside damn um I can't figure any of this out I don't know what's happening I know I should leave but I just can't I can't at least nobody can get inside tonight at least I'm safe inside or if something's inside with you you're gonna struggle to get out you know what I'm saying okay and then we have another tweet a few days after Christmas I heard something someone was outside all right here we go I was in the kitchen washing a glass and I heard something outside <laughs> Triple dot, someone outside, something outside, on the deck, something outside on the deck, a scratching sound, and then it stopped. I thought I imagined it, but then I heard footsteps. And for some reason, I just ran outside without thinking. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm scared anymore. I just want answers. He's probably numb, but he's probably numb to the fact that everything's happening to him and all that. I can't be sure, but I think it was her. I saw someone running into the woods. I'm sure it was her, but I couldn't catch her in time. <sighs> I thought I thought about chasing her into the woods, but decided against it. <sighs> see, he's very like See, he's very like indecisive, you know? Jesus. I don't want to get lost out there at night. I turned around to go back inside, and that's when I saw what she'd been doing on my deck in the first place. I shouldn't still be surprised by these artifacts, but, excuse me, this one was huge, taller than me, and it had my sweatshirt from, oh, and it had my sweatshirt from the storm tied in the middle, and it had my sweatshirt from the storm tied in the middle. Oh my god. When it rains outside like this, I get tired. Alright, and we have a picture. Uh, fear the new moon. And there's the sweatshirt. It's like, kind of like a crucified thing. <sighs> this looks like a really nice deck. From from what I'm seeing right here, it looks like a, it, it would be a really nice deck. But yeah, you see, now I feel like he is a bigger target now. Because it's the size of him. Oh, I think we're about to hear thunder. Maybe. Honestly, I... Honestly, I was just going to leave it there. Oh. See? <laughs> Honestly, I was just going to leave it there. I'm sick of this. I was about to go back inside when I noticed there was something written on the wall behind the artifact. I hadn't even seen it before. Fear the new moon. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I don't know where that woman got a fucking marker and I don't like how fucking sim how fucking familiar she feels around my house and property. <laughs> I don't I don't like how fucking familiar. I hate that I consider this is my house now that this feels normal now. I'm losing it. I want this to end. Whatever this new moon shit is, it feels like something's coming. Fuck this. All right, and we have a picture that, uh, okay, this person replied to him. Just gonna share this again. Um, I guess the new moon is January 5th, and we have a picture right here. It appears to be an android. <laughs> this picture's funny. Did that just shake you? It says there's gonna be a storm tomorrow. The new moon is tomorrow too. I should be fine if I just stay inside. It's been storming all day, and, and it's been storming all day and into the night. Thunder and everything. I've stayed inside all day. Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened yet. Maybe the, nothing will happen. Christ. Still, I'm nervous. I've been freaked out all day. Maybe I shouldn't have stayed. I don't know what's wrong with me. I should leave tomorrow. I'm not even really sure what I'm saying. I just need to occupy myself with something. Writing this makes me feel less alone. It's like I'm talking to someone. 
yeah, like, freaking 130,000 people, probably. 133,000 people. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving tomorrow. First thing in the morning. I don't care about selling this house anymore. I just want to go home. I just need to make it through the night. I'll be fine if I stay inside. The locks are new and nobody can get in. I'll be fine. I'm going to I'm going to go get some wine and stay in the upstairs bedroom tonight. It'll be okay. She's here. She was in the cellar. Are you serious? Oh god, I see a picture and you guys are about to see it too. Fuck. I practically ran right into her. She didn't even hear me because of the thunder outside. Her back was to me and she was standing dead still in the middle of the room, just staring at the wall. What the fuck is this picture? I couldn't move. I was petrified. All I could do was stand there like a fool and stare at the back of her head. Honestly, ew. And then she turned around and she spoke to me. She said she won't hurt me. She said she'd explain everything. I'm sorry. This is all happening so fast. She's sitting in my living room now. I can't believe this is happening. He's on tw he's just on Twitter while she's sitting there with him. Sorry, I'm just making- Sorry, I'm just trying to make sense of it. Dude, pay attention! Stop freaking tweeting! She said she'd tell me everything. I'll be back. Okay. Okay! So, I'll try to relay everything she said, but there was so much of it, can barely keep track of it all. I'll start at the beginning. First, she says she made the stick things for my protection. She says it's dangerous out here, and she was trying to protect me. When I asked what she was trying to protect me from, she was quiet for a long time. When she finally replied, I could he barely hear her. There are things in the water. I didn't really believe her, but I didn't really have any rap. But I didn't have any rational explanation for the things I've seen. So instead, I just listened. Here's what she told me. A long time ago, something came from the sky and landed in the lake. It brought something with it. Something ancient and strange. The people who lived here began to commute to commune with it. The people, the people who lived here began to commune with it. They protected it from the outside world, devoted their lives to it, and in return, the thing gave them a gift. The people were blessed with abnormally long, healthy lives and many children, but it all came with a price. It had so many, qu I had so many questions. I had so many questions, but I, but didn't know which ones to ask. So I could just, so I just sat there in silence and took it all in. The, wo the woman continued. In the beginning, there was just one. It spent most of its time deep in the lake slumbering, but over time it made more. The eggs? Is it a mon- is this a Loch Ness monster? What? Indistinctively, I asked about the eggs I saw in the woods. The woman nodded. There are so many of them now, she said. They come from the water to lay eggs and people take care of them, hide them away until they hatch. But when they hatch, they need to feed. At that point, I was starting to put two and two together. I thought about all the twins I've seen in town. She must have sensed my understanding because she spoke again. I told you there was a price. Wow. The people in, the, the people in this town are blessed with many children, but they don't get to keep them all. When the eggs hatch, the people must bring one of their own to the woods. Oh my god, the creatures need to eat. She was quiet again then. They start with your eyes. Did she escape? She escaped. I asked her how she knew I asked her how she knew all this, but I already knew the answer. I know because it happened to me, she said. When I was a girl, my father brought me into the wood with the others, offered me up to the newborns. She turned her head toward the window like she was gazing into the distance. They took my eyes. I waited until she was ready to speak again. It was, lo it was a long time before she did. She told me how she was led to one of the eggs, how she watched it break open, how something came out of it. And before she knew it, something was on her, burrowing into her eyes. She wasn't sure what happened next. She only remembers the searing, the pain, and then suddenly she was free. She doesn't know if she managed to push the creature off or if someone helped her, but she got away and ran into the woods. She ran until she couldn't breathe anymore. She was so scared to go home, so she stayed in the woods. Eventually, the forest became her home. She's been there ever since. I felt completely bewildered. None of this made sense to me, but at the same time, it did. Somehow. 
I had so many questions I wanted to ask, but I couldn't sort my thoughts. I couldn't figure out what to say. Finally, I asked, why are you telling me this now, after all this time? The woman didn't say anything at first. She took a long, labored breath. It's the same every year, she said. They come out of the water in the fall, lay their eggs. A few of them began, a few of them begin to hatch early. They feed on animals in the woods. They need strength to make it back to the water. But most of them hatch when it's darkness, she turned to me. Even without eyes, I felt like she was staring right at me. Tonight is the new moon, she whispered. Tonight is the ceremony. My stomach began to sink as realization set in. Realization about what was happening out there in the woods at that very moment. We have to do something to stop it, I blurted out. I started getting, I started getting out of my chair, but she just shook her head. She said, there's nothing we can do. It happens the same way every year. We can't stop it. What the fuck is going on? What is happening? But I wasn't listening anymore. I don't know what came over me, but, but I jumped up and ran out the door, ran into the woods. I don't even know where I was going. At some point, the rain had stopped. It was dark and I couldn't see anything, but I could hear things all around me, things moving through the trees, and I could see lights in the distance, fire or flashlights. I don't know. I had no idea where to go or what to do. More than once, something ran by me in the trees. I was using my phone as a flashlight and tried to take some and tried to take pictures of the trees, trying to see what was out there, but everything was happening so fast. I don't know what these are. And we have two pictures here. It looks like there's a person in the back right there. Oh no, this is the clearest shot I could get. They all moved so fast. Oh no, is that a skull? That's so weird. I ran for what seemed like an eternity. Ran in circles, I had no idea where, where I was, where I even was. And on that note, I think, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna end it right there. My, my, actually my camera battery is on red and it's blinking and it's scaring the fuck out of me. So I'm gonna let you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this rather eventful episode of Gregory88. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. It means the world to me. I love you. Bye-bye.